Hi, everyone. Today, what I want to share with you are some tips on what you can do when you're starting out in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space, and you want to start listening and learning more. I talk about how common pitfall is that organizations jump the listening and learning phase or want to shorten it to move into action. And that might be very well-intentioned because we all want to create change and have an impact in this space, but sometimes we don't spend enough time really understanding the issues. So what are some of the things that your organization can do when you're in that listening and learning phase? Well, one thing is making sure that there are norms in place first so that we create the space and container for everyone to feel psychologically safe. Because in this case, sometimes we're having really triggering conversations or conversations that we're not used to having as it relates to maybe race or gender expression or other topics that might be sensitive. And so we might not even be sure how to approach these conversations. There might be a lot of trepidation as we're having these conversations. So we want to make sure that we have norms on how we're going to have them or how we're going to facilitate these conversations. The second thing is starting to have those facilitated conversations. So what could that look like? Well, I think about diversity way beyond the protected classes, but one way to start the conversation is to approach it from, you know, having a different protected class that we're talking about each day. So whether one day we're having conversations about racial equity, um, and you could do that by whether it's choosing to look at an article, a TED talk, a book, and then have discussions around it. It could also be some prompts that you're using, some questions, and people can share their stories or, um, or their knowledge and background background in this area. Um, you can have a conversation about uh, privilege. I love Peggy McIntosh's article that and questions that already has prompts. And you can, you can talk about gender parity. You can talk about gender fluidity and expression. And again, inviting people to the table so that they can share their stories. You can have a one day where you're talking about uh, veterans transitioning to civilian life. So the protected classes can be a guide as to what are all the different ways in which we can approach conversations in this space, because diversity is not race alone, although that is a very important topic in the space. So that's one way to approach it. Then the other thing is to make sure that everyone has a shared understanding that if we're using terms, we know what they mean and that we're using them correctly. Um, but that also means giving space for people to, to raise their hand when they're not really sure and to be able to say, you know, I'm not sure if this is appropriate or inappropriate. So we have to get away almost from being afraid uh, of saying things that are inappropriate to make sure that we come to that shared understanding, that everyone's learning in the space and that we're going to make mistakes. So the last thing I would say is then to, with all the voices at the table, to co-create the vision, not only for your organization, but how this is going to uh, um, impact individuals, both on a personal level, on an organizational level, and then in the communities in which they serve. So how do we all contribute to that um, shared vision? So those would be just some tips of conversations and of work and intention that we can do when we're in that listening and learning phase. And if you have any questions or need support in this area, feel free to reach out.